All right, so like I mentioned, we've got this nice uh, Manny here today. I'm gonna show you kind of what I did. The uh, pointer and pinky are both kind of a ombre. It came out a little bit more marbly than I think I was expecting it to, um, but I actually really like it. This gray is called Stormy Skies. It's dip 87 by Sparkle & Co. It is a temperature change, so you can see on my middle finger here, it looks kind of lighter at the base uh, near my cuticle and darker at the tip. That's just because uh, my skin is warm, obviously my finger is warmer, and so that's a temperature change. The pink that I'm using is a uh, Dip 125 Glow Baby Glow. And as you can tell by the name, that glows in the dark. So it's gonna look really cool. I'll take some stills uh, and insert them at the end so that you can see what it looks like uh, in the dark. I'll get it charged up and let it glow. And then I have uh, our subscription box color number 34 from Sparkle & Co. Bling in the New Year and that is on my ring finger. And then this one's just a straight glow baby glow on my thumb. So, and then I did do a matte over everything except the glitter. Um, I just was feeling a pink and gray matte day. So let's uh, get started. So I've already done um, up to the glossy coat on these two fingers, the glow baby glow and one of the ombres. I'm gonna show you these three. Um, I wasn't gonna do the sparkle one, but it is a fairly chunky um, glitter, if you can, I don't know if you can really see well. Um, it's a fairly chunky glitter, and those can be problematic for some people. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through that so that you can see what the process is. Uh, the owner of Sparkle & Co, Christy, she made a little video of had the best way to do that, so I follow her, uh, her method, her advice which is instead of doing kind of a few fingers at a time and dip, 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 um, you just do this one finger all in a row. So the trick is to uh, keep the, uh, the glitter wet so that you can tap it down and keep it flat until you are ready to do the buffing. So um, I already do have a clear uh, dip on my nails here just as kind of a base. I always, always do that just you know, have a little bit of a base going on. So we're gonna go ahead and start in with our base bond on the finger. Again, remember, get all the edges. You don't wanna go all the way to the cuticle, but pretty close and um, get it as thin as you possibly can. And then on these uh, chunky glitters, I'm just gonna lay my finger right on top and make sure you shake these always with all your dips. You should. Uh, you know, give them a little twist around, not shake necessarily, but tap some of that off. And then I'm just gonna use my finger and tap down on this. And that's just gonna get these big chunky glitters if they're standing up straight to, um, to go flat. I'm gonna do a real quick around the cuticle. So anything that is too close to the edge is gonna come off here. And then we're gonna go straight back into the base bond. And that's gonna go right over top for a second dip. So as you can imagine with this glitter, it does get fairly thick by the time you get all the layers on. Um, whenever I'm using a glitter dip, I always, always, always um, put a clear dip over top that way and I know I've mentioned this before but that way when I'm buffing the pieces of glitter aren't just flying everywhere so this just this around the edge thing is just purely for cleaner lines um, I found it to be helpful so especially these chunky glitters because it could be attached to the base bond that's on your nail, but actually be sticking way over the edge of your cuticle. So, you know, just the best you can keep that. We're gonna go another base bond on here. And this is gonna be just a clear dip over top, like I said, because we wanna protect this glitter when I'm gonna go in and buff it and smooth it and all that. So that's going into the clear crystal clear dip okay so it's coming off there and again I'm just going around the edge and get as much off and 
if you don't do this, it's not that big of a deal. I've found that anything that is not really adhered to your nail um, will either buff off while you buff or it'll come off like all these p little pieces of glitter on my finger. I'm not worried about that because they're not stuck with anything. They're just sticking to my skin. So those will um, come off. So, so now that we're good there, we're going to go with a coat of Solidify here, our activator, and it's going to harden up that dip for us so we can get in here and buff so and I've mentioned lots of times I am NOT a professional nail tech I just really enjoy doing my nails since I found sparkle and co I've just had so much fun I literally change my manicure every week because I cannot stand uh, how many beautiful colors there are I just I have to change it because I'm like oh I want to try this I want to try this I want to try this so that is um, a lot of fun. So that's part of the reason why I created this channel so that I could show you all as I'm changing my manicures every 15 minutes, it feels like. Not really 15 minutes, not literally. So I'm trying to keep this in the frame here so you can sort of. So when you're using an e-file, you want to be careful. There's lots of tutorials um, on YouTube and stuff. And I, like I said, I am not a professional nail tech, so I will never make a how to use your e-file because I'm, I'm not a pro. Um, I haven't taken any classes. I've just learned kind of through trial and error um, and what I like personally. I have watched a lot of tutorials so that's why I say, you know, you should start there. Um, the important things when I'm e-filing for me, you want to be careful. You want to use the uh, the e-file on as slow of a setting that will accomplish what you need it to. It gets pretty fast, but the faster you go, the more friction it causes, which means it gets hot and it can burn you, uh, burn your nail. And it, you know, it probably won't kill you. You'd never want to do a drill like this on your natural nail. Um, theoretically, you could if you're using a really, really fine uh, sander and just really lightly. But that would only be like to nail prep. You want to get all that cuticle off, but you wouldn't ever use it for anything other than that on a natural nail. So the important things here are, you know, look, you can see I got really close to my cuticle. And that's probably not a really great idea. That was my fault, so. Like I always say, guys, real life. This is real life stuff here, and like, I'm not a pro. So, um, so I probably would have preferred to not have it quite as close with these chunky glitters, though it is fairly difficult. Um, but I'm just shaping this nail, and it's actually looking pretty good. And I'm really trying to thin out here near the cuticle, because what'll happen is, since it's so close to my cuticle and it, these chunky glitters or any dip really can get thick, once it starts to grow out, things can get caught under there and it'll start to lift. If it lifts, bacteria can get under there and it's just plain annoying. It gets caught in my hair. It's just, it can be really irritating. So this time I'm really taking a lot of care to, um, Kind of smooth out that lower portion real close to my cuticle and on the sides as well because the same thing can happen to the sides so but i feel like this looks pretty good i kind of try and look at it from all angles so i'm looking at it obviously this way and then i'll look at it also all the way straight down just to make sure the shape looks good because if there's lumps or if it's like higher on one side it will It'll irritate me once I'm, once I've got them on and slow down there. So, all right. So the other thing I'm going to do is take my regular file and just kind of do the edges here to separate it from the cuticle a little bit. You know, I shape my nails and everything before um, putting on any dip, but you want to try and preserve that because sometimes it gets out of whack. So. I'm in the process of changing my nail shape. If you remember the first couple of videos I did, I used to have a square with the rounded edges and I've kind of changed to this rounder, not quite an almond, I don't think, but 
mostly because my um, my nails aren't long enough. So, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that feels good. Actually, this one side, real life. I know. I'm sorry if I bore you, but this is this is real life, and this will bother me because this side is a little bit higher. I can, when I put my finger over it, I could feel that it was. Yeah, that's better. So if things like that bug you, I mean, take your time, you know, I, I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can for the video's sake, just so it doesn't end up being 600 minutes long, but that is much better. So we're going to go in with another coat of solidify here now that we're done with our buffing. And then we're going to give that a minute to dry. If you put the glossy coat on too soon, it, um, it starts to get... Uh, the solidify gets in the glossy and it gets um, like stringy. It's really strange. Um, but anyway, so we're going to move on to these two. We are doing a full gray on the middle finger to match this side and then the little uh, bit of a marbly ombre on the pointer finger. So we're going to go ahead and move on to that for now and we're going to start with just the uh, plain dips. We'll do uh, two dips of each color. The uh, ombre finger does tend to get a little thick, which I hate. So I file it quite a bit. So we're just into stormy skies there. That's our color change dip that we're using today. Beautiful gray, and it just looks really cool. Um, And then we're gonna do a dip of Glow Baby Glow. Anything that is just a single color, like my thumb, I did just the Glow Baby Glow and the um, the middle finger where we're doing the gray, that's gonna be just two straight dips um, into the color that we're using. If I'm doing an ombre, I'll try really hard to get good coverage, which I did on this one. There's not holes or anything. There's nothing missing anywhere because I want to limit as many. If I put, there's already a layer of clear and then a layer of glow baby glow. And then I have to do a layer for the ombre, which is the gray on the uh, tip plus clear to even that out and then clear on top. Cause when I buff, I don't want all the gray to go away, uh, which was the problem I was having when I first did it. So, all right. So we're going to go back here to this, uh, ring finger nail and um, put this glossy coat on and the first coat you want to do thin needs maybe 15 to 20 seconds and you can see it it looks really glossy when you first put it on and then it'll kind of like matte a little bit and that's just because it goes into the dip which is why we put then a second coat of the glossy on top And then it's super shiny and that will take just about a minute and a half to two minutes and it'll be completely dry to the touch which is awesome so while we're doing that we're gonna go into the next coat for our stormy skies so now that's set a little bit we're just gonna brush off the excess real lightly and then go in for our next coat and again you don't want to put this on too thick but you want to make sure you get good coverage and anytime I'm using, well, any color really, I always wipe the brush before I put it in. Just, it's kind of become a habit because I um, I don't want the color to get into the bottle. So I just give it a little wipe and that's going into stormy skies again. Tap off the excess. So you can see we've got good coverage on that there. And um, I don't see anything that looks too close to the cuticle, but so it looks all right. I'm not too worried about it. All right, so now for the ombre, which is going to end up looking like this one here. Um, we've done one coat of the Glow Baby Glow, so now we're going to do another base bond. And then we're going to use our Old Faithful. Uh, this is Elf. 
at Target, $3 for this eyebrow brush or eyeshadow brush. And I really like it because it's bushy enough, but it's small enough that I can control it. When I do my ombres, I like to hold the brush like this and tap with my pointer finger. I feel like that gives me the most control. If you're doing ombres with multiple colors, which in a couple weeks, I'm gonna do this really beautiful uh, blue um, double ombre. Um, and I'll show you that in a couple weeks. Um, so you wanna have a couple brushes. If you're using something with glitter, you might wanna have a separate brush for that. You know, it just depends on how irritated you get by things getting a little bit mixed up. And um, you know, you just wash them with a little soap and water when you're done and let them dry um, before the next time you do another manicure and then you're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and do the ombre here. So we're gonna get a good uh, little bit of the stormy skies and just start going from side to side. All right, tap off the excess and that looks totally lopsided. So we're gonna do some more over here and hopefully it's still sticky. There we go. And then into the clear and that just, uh, any of the base bond that was down here that didn't get gray on it needs something to cover it up so so we'll just dust off the extra there that stormy skies is done so that's just two coats of a single dip color and then our ombre is going to need one more coat of clear over top and again that's so when we buff that the um that gray doesn't come off. So we're just gonna give it a little light brush to get off any excess that's sitting on there. And then we're gonna go for a clear dip here. And again, you don't wanna get too close to the cuticle. Pretty close, because if you don't do it close enough, it'll look silly. And uh, some of that is gonna come off, but it's just gonna go into the clear dip to protect it. All right, so you can see there what that looks like. All right, now these both would need a coat of Solidify before we can start buffing. So we'll do that. Okay, so the Solidify is on. We'll give that just a quick minute here. Um, the Stormy Skies, the, the normal colors, I don't always feel like I need the e-file for these because they're not super um, like difficult. They don't, I don't know, they just don't seem to be quite as um, chunky or get lopsided as easily as some of the like glitter and things like that. Even though these are just regular colors, because I'm doing the ombre, I am gonna use the e-file for that one for sure. Cause I just want it to be nice and smooth, so. I'll try just a regular buff here. Yeah, so I can feel that's a little lopsided. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the e-file and just go around the edges. And again, I'm trying to thin out near the cuticle here so that later on that's not getting caught on anything. And you can see it looks like it's turning super chalky and that's two reasons. One, because it does that. And two, uh, it becomes light gray when it's cold. So this is, actually I guess this would make it warmer, wouldn't it? Yeah, it gets light gray when it's warm, is that right? Yeah, it's dark gray when it's cold and it gets light gray when it's warm. That's what it was. I was like, that doesn't sound right. I told you real life people. Okay, so these edges are looking good. Feels good looks pretty even here. I'm just gonna go over this spot right here. You can see it's not quite flat. 
There we go. That's uh, looking better. Okay, one's done. So we're gonna go on and go ahead and buff um, our ombre nail. And you're gonna see the, um, the gray kind of looks like it comes off. And again, it, it partly lightens and it, part of it does come off. But, um, you know, it looks a little bit more marbly, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not gonna attempt to explain why. All I know is that when you ombre with a glitter, the glitter falls differently um, than the dip powders that don't have the glitter. I, I don't, it must just be the weight of it, I'm not sure, but you could see um, in the video when I put on this gray dip, how heavy the, um, the dip falls. I mean, it just like good chunks of it, not chunks is not the right word, but you know, it just fell a lot, a lot more at a time. Whereas I feel like the glitter, maybe because it's lighter, it kind of flits its way down. <laughs> it doesn't fall as heavy. So each one has good and bad. The glitter is a little harder to control because of that as far as placement. Um, whereas the dip powder, you can get it pretty much exactly where you want because it falls straight down. But um, on the other hand, the dip powder falls straight down. And so it doesn't always get that nice dispersion like the glitter does, or at least that's what I've found from doing this. We'll have to investigate that further maybe in another video. All right, so that looks good, feels good to me. All right, we're in the home stretch. So we're dusting off here. And we're gonna go another coat of solidify, get those nice and hardened and finish them up. As always, um, I wanted to mention Sparkling Co. Uh, my favorite company, pretty much every dip I have, every dip I have is from Sparkling Co. I think I'm close to 50 dip colors now. It's a little bit of an obsession considering I've only known about Sparkling Co. since like the first or second week, the second weekend of December, and it's now January 22nd. So I've got six, six, seven weeks in, and I've already got 50 colors. So that'll tell you something about my obsession with this company. Uh, if you are gonna place an order with Sparkle & Co., they have an awesome subscription bag program. Everything from a itty bitty that they just introduced, if you only want a couple things, all the way to an I want it all bag. They range anywhere from like $12 a month all the way up to $65 a month. So you can um, decide what you want there. If you do that or place an order, they have a great referral program. If you put my name in or anyone's name, if I wasn't the one who introduced you to Sparkle & Co, feel free to put whoever did in the notes at the end uh, for checkout and you will get a credit. If you're signing up for a subscription bag, you'll get an $18 credit as will I and a uh, your first order gets you a $9 credit as, as well as the person who referred you and you're welcome to use both. So like I found this company, signed up for the subscription bag the same day and placed my order either later that day or the next day, my first order, and I got $27 in credits for that, 18 for the um, referral, which uh, the person I used got also, and then uh, $9 credit for my first purchase. So it's pretty cool, I'll tell ya. Great company, their customer service is amazing, so big shout out to Sparkle & Co. All right, we are on to the glossy number one in the home stretch. I know this is a little bit longer video because I'm doing, I did three nails instead of my usual like one or two. So again, we're gonna give this first coat of glossy just a 15 to 20 seconds probably. And you can see, look at this stormy skies, how it's white and parts of it are darker and it just changes color as it pleases according to the temperature, it's temp change, so really cool. And there are multiple temp change colors. I just ordered another one called Cherries and Berries, which is like a 
dark uh, red to a pink, I think. Uh, temperature change, there's, um, there's pink to purple. There's a blue one, I think, that changes different shades of blue. And so that's exciting. So this one obviously is completely dry because we've been multiple amount of time. Uh, lots of time there for that. This takes, like I said, usually a minute and a half to two minutes to dry completely. Now, if you look, you can see the difference between the hand I just did, right, which we did up to the glossy coat. So see, you can see the gloss, the shine on those. And then this hand, which is completely done, which I've done a matte finish on everything except my ring finger. My ring finger has stayed glossy, so you can see that, right? The way we're gonna achieve that is, now that we're all done, a matte top coat. Now this is just a polish coat, this is not gel, so you don't need a lamp or anything for it. And literally you just throw it on on top of the glossy and it turns matte, it's really cool. So this is again Sparkling Co, their uh, matte finish and super easy to use. So once this is dry, we will put that on top of all of these. So that's already completely dry. Hallelujah. Better than waiting 10, 15 minutes at the salon, right? For your polish to dry. Man, and this dip is so strong. My nails are growing like crazy, much stronger. So just a nice coat of the matte finish. I'm gonna go over here next because these have been done for a while. All right, and we're leaving the ring finger shiny, so we're not gonna put any on there. We wanna keep that glossy. Matte coat over here. And you'll see in just a couple minutes, once that's dry, it's gonna look super cool. So we did ombre, we did some matte finish today. We work with some chunky glitter. So this is like packed full. So you can see as this dries, right? There's like some glossy spots still cause it's not completely dry, but these two are just matte. Oh, not quite all the way dry yet. This one is matte finished now. Ta-da! It's like magic, right? So exciting. All right, well, thanks for sticking with us today. I know that was a longer video than usual. Uh, again, please, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss anything upcoming. I've got some really cool manicures planned over the next few weeks. Also, the January subscription bag unboxing. I should have that up uh, in about a week. I'll be home to pick up that. It's getting delivered to my house today, but I'm in Boston and I'll be back home in California to get that Monday. So I'll probably do it Monday afternoon. I'll try and post it right away. If not, I'll have it up by Tuesday. Um, so please, please, please check that out. And uh, we'll see you next time.